Welcome back to the Delta 5 Race Timer Series. This is part three. In this part, I will cover where to get all the software that you need, how to write the image for the Raspberry Pi for the timer, a brief overview of the interface of the timer, and the final assembly of the timer. For this step, we're going to need a micro SD card and then uh, some way for your computer to read it. Uh, for me, I need one of these little SD micro, these micro SD card adapters, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, you're going to need uh, probably a 32 gig or higher card to do this. Uh, so anyways, we'll jump over to the computer here. So there are a few things we're going to need to download. Um, one of them is a terminal it's so we can communicate with our Raspberry Pi after we have it all hooked up to the network. We're going to need to download this program called Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to be able to download that in the description. And uh, just come over here and pick out if you're 32-bit uh, Windows or 64-bit or Windows. Um, the other people out there, uh, I don't know, you're going to have to figure that out on your own. Uh, the other program we're going to need is a way to flash the uh, image to the SD card, and I prefer to use Belinda Etcher. So go ahead and download and install that. And the last thing we're going to need is the ISO file. This is the image that goes on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, conveniently enough, it's on Facebook, the Delta 5 Race Timer Group. And um, go over here. Well, first you're going to have to ask for permission. They usually grant it within a very short amount of time. Go over to Announcements. And this guy here, Scott Chin, he is the kind of the brains behind this entire setup. Uh, this guy is the guy doing all the open store stuff for the Delta 5 race timer. Um, real good guy. Uh, very, very helpful. He does have a Patreon page uh, where you can get other versions that he has out there if he releases any new code or different features if you have any uh questions or whatever uh, you can contact him here through his patreon page um, or if you just want to kick him a few bucks for uh for making this this super easy and very low cost timing solution but we want to come down to here where it says sd card image version 0.5 uh, this one's set up for a live time, and um, we'll explain that later. Go ahead and download that as well. All right, once you've downloaded the SD card contents, the, uh, the SD card image, uh, go ahead and open up Belinda Etcher. Insert your SD card into your computer. Go ahead and hit select image. And select that uh, compressed file, the D5RT uh, 0 0.5 image. You don't have to extract it. It'll figure it out itself. Make sure you have your correct SD card selected. And select Flash. And, yep, give it permission. Okay, so this is going to take a bit of time. And I'll be right back when that is done. All right, so that took a while. That's all done. We can pull our SD card out. And just a little, little tip. Take some tape. Kind of make a little tail on the end of your SD card like that. This will make this a lot easier to get in and out after it's installed in the case. So take your SD card, go ahead and pop it on into your uh, Raspberry Pi there. Now the next step, pretty important, double check to make sure you got your your, your wires set here. Make sure they, they're all on right. Make sure you have all your nodes installed, as many as you're going to use. Because the first time we hook this up, it's going to look for each one of these. And if one's not there, um, you have to go in and start messing around with some files to get it to rediscover more nodes. So, next step is going to be to connect this to your network uh, via Ethernet cable. 
Uh, I don't have an Ethernet jack on my laptop, so I'm just going to connect it to my home router and connect to the router uh, via Wi-Fi on my laptop and then go ahead and power this bad boy up um, just using whatever power supply you have. Uh, 4S LiPo works pretty good. Okay, well excuse the, uh, the big mess of wires here. I have my Raspberry Pi connected to my router via Ethernet jack. I have all my power, ground, SDA, and SCL wires connected properly. I have all four of the nodes I intend on using already flashed with the Arduino Nano file that we did uh, pr previously. All my 5808 modules installed, my two voltage regulators. This guy's ready to go. And I'm just going to plug it into a 12-volt uh, power supply here. And we do have our SD card installed, so let's go ahead and power this guy up. And I'll move back to the computer. Okay, we're back to the computer. Now we need to find our timer on our network. So the easiest way I found to do this is to log into your router, log in, however your manufacturer has you log into your router. Somewhere you're going to have a device tail that's going to list all the devices on your network and you're going to see Delta 5 race timer <clears throat> and here's the IP address for it. So go ahead and write that down and what we're going to do is we're going to put that into our address bar followed by colon 5000. And we should get something that looks like this. You're going to see nodes, all, all your nodes, uh, depending on how many you have installed. And you should see some sort of value on those nodes. And just for, uh, just for checking, um, I'm just going to plug in a quad nearby. And we see we did get some fluctuation. So it is reading our RX5808 modules. Okay, now that we've verified that it works by um, seeing that our RSI value goes up and down when we have a quad plugged in, from this screen, our settings menu, you can select the frequency for each of your nodes. Um, so you can do R1, R2, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to be using. Um, or if you're only going to be using a few, you can set these to a frequency that's far away from the other ones that you're using. Uh, here you can add uh, call signs for each pilot. And you'll even get the call out. Tweet. You can change your uh, voice selection. And down here you have some default tuning parameters. Uh, typically, when I fly outside in your race time, I usually do just a fixed two minutes, so 120 seconds. So once you get your, your ID set up for your pilots, you can even add more pilots. You'll just have to do more than one heat. So let's add a fifth pilot. You can add as many heats as you would like. So in heat one, we have myself, pilots two, three, four, and then we'll have test pilot five, since he can't run with us, since we're only four nodes deep. So here are our two heats. So now once we have this all set, we can go over to race. Okay, so now we can go to our race screen. We can select start race. And you get your start tone.
And we'll just fake a few laps with this quad. Test pilot 2 lap 115.0. Test pilot two lap two fifteen point one. And then we can stop our laps. And then you can save laps. And then we can switch to heat two and start the same thing again. Uh, or if you wanted to actually run a race, you would hit the start fixed time race, and that'll do the two minute race. Now once we're done racing or you're done doing your practice, or whatever you're doing with this. You can go to your rounds, and you can see what your times were for each round. This is a super useful tool, especially if you're testing, or, uh, or you know, if you just want to go out and see what your times are. Uh, I find this very useful for testing different, uh, different configurations, different setups, different quads. See which ones I can get around track faster. You have to have a consistent track, but it's something, something you do. Anyways, that's how the interface works. That's a real basic overview of the, um, the system. There's a lot that can be done with it. Uh, this can be integrated to work with live time, but uh, like I said, join Scott Chin's Patreon page. I'll put a link at the bottom of this video uh, to get more information on how to do that and to get different um, images for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we're done racing for the day and we're gonna turn our timer off. You really should not just pull power from it. You really should come down here and select shutdown. Uh, this will save your results, save your pilots, save all this stuff, and it won't, uh, it won't hammer your, your file system so hard. So we're gonna hit shutdown. And if you look at your Raspberry Pi, you'll see the green light on it will eventually stop flashing and then you're good to power it down. Okay, back to the bench. Okay, now that we have our timer set up and it's working, we can go ahead and assemble it. So uh, I've chose to make a 3D printed case, take our Raspberry Pi, go ahead and set it down inside the case and using some leftover M3 cap head screws from, I don't know, some, some quad build, Go ahead and install this guy. And here you can kind of see why I suggested the putting a little tape tail on your SD card. Makes it a lot easier to get out of here without actually you know, pulling the board out. So go ahead and pop our SD card back in. All right, so next we need this little spacer. And this will hold the PCB up. like so. And our XT60 is gonna go down here in the bottom of the case. There is a small cutout underneath it to feed a zip tie. So we can zip tie that XT60 in place. If you choose to do that. tight quarters working on there. And go ahead and fit your 
timer board in place like so. Kind of rot your wires down. Get our lid and install some really long M3 screws. There we go. There's our timer, all done, nice and solid. And uh, I highly recommend giving this a try. It is well worth every penny. It's super consistent, super reliable, uh, especially when flying with, well, however many people worth of nodes you have inside of there, as opposed to like the Lap RF and the Team Black Sheep timer, which really are only good for one pilot at a time because they only have one receiver module for each one. So I highly recommend this. Uh, I highly recommend checking out Scott Chin's um, Patreon page. He has a lot of really cool things coming out for these things. Um, I really recommend you check that out. Uh, drop by, say hi, join the Facebook page. Um, if you want to build one of these, I'll put all the bits and pieces that I used in the description below. Hey, if I forget something, uh, if I forget to put something in that description, uh, just, you know, get on there, clack away, let me know what I forgot, and I'll, uh, I'll get you guys a, a good link to all the bits and pieces, um, that it took for me to build this. Uh, all the links to all the software, files, um, printed case designs everything. It's all open source. Modify it to your heart's content. Uh, just remember this build was for the basic Delta five software box hardware, this design, nothing else, anything outside of this design. I, I, I don't know what to do for you. Um, but, uh, I've used these, we've used these at races. These things are super, super accurate. And they're uh, pretty easy to use once you figure out the interface, uh, which you got to figure out with every other manufacturer's worth, every other manufacturer's timer. So, anyways, uh, if you like what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. Uh, let me know if you've built one of these, how it works out for you, or if you've used some of the other offerings that some of the other uh, manufacturers have out there. Uh, let me know how they worked out for you. Um, if you've ever tried them with more than one person and have had good luck with them. Well, let me know. As always, keep flying.